don't forget uh, Thursday uh, prophetic promise uh, at 6 15 uh, th Friday or uh, Friday uh, prophetic promise service uh, at 6 15 a.m. Uh, it will be good if you could gather and receive the promise and take part in the communion uh, on the first of the month and be greatly blessed and start the word uh, and uh, start the day with this uh, promised word uh, hallelujah so i welcome everyone for this uh, morning prophetic service on friday morning so this uh, morning we are going to meditate on the word uh, uh, sub so with the title uh, uh, the message titled uh, his expect expectation is fruit uh, um, the meaning of the title is uh, God has got an expectation and uh, his expectation is that we bring forth fruit in other words we see goodness of his in our life so that is uh, one of the main reasons why the Lord Jesus came uh, down for us he died at the cross and uh, he was buried and on third day he rose again that uh, the goodness of God can be restored into our life. So we living this supernatural life on this uh, natural world uh, is, uh, is a simple uh, thing if we know what are the uh, requirements to see the goodness of God in our life. Today we are going to see uh, around four points which are important to see that uh, the goodness of God uh, will continue in our life. Let us start with uh, Psalm chapter 27 verse 13. Uh, Psalms chapter 27 verse 13. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Let us stand and uh, thank God for this word. My Father, we thank you, Lord, for this word. We bring it to your throne of grace, Lord. We pray, Father, let the Spirit of God hallelujah, reveal the truth from this word and strengthen our spirit that we may live a life of dominion. We open our hearts to receive this word with uh, thanksgiving and with joy in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please be seated. <clears throat> Psalm says here, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So he had a revelation about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And he also had a revelation saying that unless he believes, he will not see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Here, fainted means uh, out of uh, lived without uh, seeing the blessings of the Lord or uh, the benefits of the kingdom of God in my life uh, while I lived on this earth. Though we have been translated into the kingdom of the dear son, it is uh, uh, necessary and it is uh, important that we have the knowledge of the truth and we believe the truth to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. On this earth, if we have to see the goodness of God, we need to have the truth in us. The differential factor between the people of the world and the people in the kingdom of God is uh, we have the truth. And if we can believe the truth, we will see or we will um, experience the goodness of the Lord while we are still on this earth. So 
to live uh, to live a life or supernatural life on this natural world is a simple thing at the same time is also difficult it will be difficult when we have no understanding of the truth it will be simple if you have the revelation of the truth the revelation of the truth makes us overcome us obstacles are there difficulties are there challenges are there but for all this what we need is the truth to overcome these obstacles or challenges if we have an understanding about the word of god in us we can live a life of dominion on this earth an overcoming life a supernatural life a life of sufficiency for all sufficiency is from him we are complete in him we are complete in the lord jesus christ so psalmist had a revelation even the old testament that he had to believe then only he will see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living even today we have the truth what jesus did for us at the cross and that five um points in salvation gives us a complete goodness of god into our life so let us see uh, what are the four uh, we are going to see four points what are the four uh, areas where we need to be careful to see the continuous flow of god's goodness in our life the first is obedience to the truth four points we are going to meditate to see the continuous flow of god's goodness in our life which are the things which we have to believe and how the manifestation of goodness will uh, uh, will be evident in our life with a little effort from our side galatians chapter 3 verse 1 to 3 galatians chapter 3 verse 1 to 3 o foolish galatians who had bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes jesus christ had been evidently set forth crucified among you this only would i learn of you received ye the spirit of the works of the law or by the hearing of faith are you so foolish having begun in the spirit are you now made perfect by the flesh here we see the third was having begun in the spirit are you now made perfect by the flesh how did we begin in the spirit we started our spiritual life by believing what did we believe we believed for our salvation the truth which says the lord jesus came onto the earth he died on the cross and he rose again and he seated in the right hand of the father for us while we believed and we acted upon it we saw the first goodness through this truth that is salvation hallelujah so we had begun our spiritual journey by believing the truth of the gospel which is the good news to all mankind so after knowing that we are facing a spiritual warfare our warfare is not in the flesh it is in the spirit if we have victory in the spirit we have victory on this earth that's why saying having begun in the spirit are you now made perfect by the flesh in other words if you know that your spiritual journey has started because you believed the truth and started in the spirit it is necessary we continue the spiritual journey understanding the truth in the word of god to see our victories in our life so here it says oh foolish galatians 
who hath bewitched you that you sh should not obey the truth because whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you bewitch means it's talking about um, um, singular who has bewitched you in other words uh, is literally doing a witchcraft if anyone tries to take you away from the truth that's equal into witchcraft in other words they're trying to come against God's work in your life that is bewitching it in other words uh, when God has got a plan to bring goodness of his into your life if anybody tries to uh, take the, that truth from you, that is bewitching or that is a, a, a witchcraft work of that person. The goodness of the Lord contains in the truth. That's what it says, who bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? So in obedience to the truth in the word of God is how you see God's goodness in your life. The truth is in front of you. You have the revelation of the truth but still somebody keeps uh, you uh, away from obeying it. Saying oh these things are not really going to help you. Come my way. I will teach you something which uh, you can get things faster. Maybe the things which you uh, uh, achieve through obeying the truth might be uh, delayed or might take its time. It will take God's time. If someone else says, oh, there is some short or uh, so shortcut ways that I can show you how you can achieve these goals. That is bewitching. That is trying to take somebody away from the truth. Truth is constant. At the same time, it is firm. It doesn't change. Nobody can change the truth. It is the same yesterday, today and forever. Hallelujah. And it doesn't change according to the place or according to the person or according to time. The truth is uh, constant for everyone, every place at all times. Hallelujah. So that is why it's called as the truth. If there's any change in that, it is not called as the truth. It's lies. So when you know it is the truth, it is also necessary that we obey that to see the goodness of God in our life. If we don't obey, the Bible says, after knowing the truth, if we don't obey, the Bible calls us as foolish. O oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? It says, are you foolish? Again, say, are you foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? In other words, anything by your might or strength is not going to bring the benefit or the goodness of God in your life. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. The word of God is a spirit. It brings life into dead situations. While we believe and you operate or obey in that truth, then that truth will bring the benefits which it says it has into your life. That is what is truth all about. The truth is about believing what the Lord says it is there. While you believe it, you receive into your life those things according to your faith. That is saying, if you fear, this is a negative uh, faith, that also comes to one's life according to one's fears. 
again, that is not what you see. It is what comes into your life because of a, uh, of a, of a negative fate, which is called fear. Fear attracts those things what you fear into your life. Same way, when you believe the truth, the word of God, that also draws those goodness, what God has promised in this word into your life. So now, the, what we have before us is, is it easy to fear or easy to believe? Both are difficult. But uh, fear comes uh, without an effort, but your faith comes uh, with your effort. Why is it like that? Uh, fear comes without effort because the enemy tries to work in your mind. You start feeling in your soul, oh, this might happen. That, that's why fear comes. But God's word is coming into your spirit. You have to take it to your mind. You have to fill your mind with the word which you have received so that your mind, which is a soul, will start believing to receive that. Fear comes easier because the mind is already prepared to receive it. But the truth which you receive in your spirit, that truth from the spirit, you have to prepare your mind to attract those goodness into your life. That means uh, for faith or to believe, you have an effort. For fear, you have no effort. It comes by itself. That is why Jesus says, fear not, fear not, fear not. Faith cometh by hearing. Fear doesn't need hearing. It starts imagining. You, your thoughts will bring those fears. Nobody has to tell you this is something is going to happen. No, it, some physical, or oh sorry, spiritual force is uh, speaking to your mind. Saying, see, this could happen, that could happen. Trying to, because the devil has uh, a weapon which it can use from far, which is fear. Fear brings doubt and unbelief. It starts doubting the word of God and it, un it has a disbelief towards the word of God. That is what fear does. So if you make sure that you don't fear, but you only believe the word of God, you are ready to believe, have faith in what God says. Fear has got no place in your life. That is what is obedience to the truth. Let anybody say anything. I'm not going to be swayed because I have the truth and I will obey the truth. And this truth which I obey will attract into my life the goodness of the Lord. Second point, let us go to our ways and our thoughts be acceptable to God. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so, it talks about wicked, it talks about unrighteous. It doesn't talk about sinners, am I right? Because uh, sinners don't, sinners are not in the church, they're outside the church. The minute you accept the Lord Jesus as your Savior, Lord and Savior, you become righteous. But wicked are also there in the church. They are not outside. Who is the wicked? Wicked is the one who knows the truth, who knows the word. But is not ready to walk according to the way of the Lord. He's not, a, he's not ready to obey the word of God. He doesn't want to use the word as his way. 
in Tamil it says Dur Margan, in the, the one who goes in the wrong way. Wicked means the one who goes in the wrong way. The one who walks away from the word of God is a wicked. So that you know, let the wicked forsake his way, the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon him. So wicked is understood by the wrong ways and unrighteous is about his wrong thoughts. The righteous one has got the thoughts according to the word of God. God told Abraham, come and see, this is how your generation is going to be, like the stars in heaven. Then Abraham believed. Then the Lord said, because you believed, it will be considered for you as righteousness. When you believe the word of God, it is considered as a righteousness. When you walk in the way of the Lord, you are considered as righteous. But if you walk away from the word of God, you are considered as wicked. If you don't believe the word of God and walk, I mean, uh, your thoughts are not according to the word of God, then a person is righteous. In other words, the one who challenges in the mind uh, the word of God is unrighteousness. Why? I don't think it will happen like that. I don't believe it. I am not accepting this word of God. Uh, that is unrighteous. There is nothing to accept or nothing to deny. The word of the Lord is truth. Hallelujah. It's true for everyone. All we have to do is uh, believe it and say this is the word of the Lord. Heaven and earth shall fail but his word will never fail. He spake and it is done. He commanded and it stood fast. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So there is no argument when it comes to the word of God. When you take the word the way it is, that is when we will see the goodness of the Lord. Here it says, let the wicked forsake his way and unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. In other words, the one who is wicked and the one who is righteous, the one who is walking away from the word of God, the one who is not, uh, his uh, mind which is not according to the uh, word of God, let them return unto the Lord and let them repent. Let them repent and come back to the Lord and say, Lord, I have done wrong. My ways have not been right. My thoughts have not been right. The one who returns, God will have mercy upon them. Hallelujah. In other words, the miracle working power will start working in that person's life. God will have Mercy upon him. Hallelujah. In other words, uh, here it says, uh, the Lord, the, he will have mercy upon him and to our God, he will abundantly pardon. The minute you repent, what is God saying? He will have mercy upon uh, that person and he will abundantly pardon. He'll forgive abundantly. He'll forgive His forgiveness is instant. The minute repentance is seen in a person's heart, God immediately brings down his mercy and forgives. Hallelujah. In other words, things will start to work in a person's life the way it has to work how the goodness of God has to flow. The goodness of the Lord will flow into one's life. Uh, when? While they repent. The mercy of God will come down. 
and the Lord will abundantly pardon that person, saying, you are forgiven, my child. My mercy is upon you. You know what is mercy? Mercy rejoiced over judgment. When you have mercy for someone else, God's mercy will be upon you. Rejoice at our judgment means in a time of judgment, that mercy you are shown for somebody else will stand in front of the Lord. And they say, okay, all whatever they have done, I'm forgiving them because they had mercy on others. The mercy what you show rejoice over judgment. Hallelujah. So our ways and our thoughts should be acceptable by the Lord. The second point, our thoughts and our ways should be accepted by the Lord. <clears throat> when our ways and our thoughts are acceptable to the Lord, that is when the goodness of the Lord flows into our life. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. The different, the, the distance between my thoughts and my ways and your thoughts and your ways is like a heaven and the earth. God says it is so different. That means uh, there is no point in depending on our ways and our thoughts. If you have to see such excellence in one's life, it is better to understand God's ways and what are God's thoughts. My thoughts for you are are peace and of peace and not of evil and to bring an expected end. Peace means shalom, prosperity in all areas of your life. My thoughts, God says, is to bring prosperity in all areas of your life and I will never think evil for you. And I will bring an expected end in according to your expectation. I'll bring it to pass in your life. God's expectation for us is that we see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. If we are not seeing the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, the reason is these four reasons. The first reason what we meditated is upon. What is the first reason? His, in us? Yes. Obedience to the truth. Unless we obey the truth, we cannot see the goodness of the Lord in our life. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Everything what you need in your life is there in the word of God. For the righteous shall be delivered through knowledge. Hallelujah. It's only through the knowledge of the word of God the righteous or the just can be, the just shall be delivered by knowledge. In other words, knowledge of the word of God. The truth is a hidden revelation inside the word of God. We read the Bible the way it is. But in the word, there is a hidden revelation which is called the truth. We have a knowledge of that. That is what delivers us. You shall know the truth. You should have the knowledge of the truth. And the same truth shall deliver you. Hallelujah. In other words, if you are in captivity, you need a key which has locked you inside that. That key is the knowledge. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. In other words, you are inside. You are locked up inside. If that has, you are to be set free, you need the truth which is the key, which is the key of knowledge of the truth. Wherever the Bible says no, that means uh, inner revelation. If you have an inner revelation about the truth, it is that 
in a revelation of the truth which will set you free. So everything what you need on this earth is there in the word of God. So second we saw our ways and our thoughts be acceptable to God if you have to see the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. The way, let the wicked forsake his ways and unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return, means repent and come to the Lord. The Lord will have mercy upon him and he will abundantly pardon him. In other words, God will change that person's life because of his repentance. His mercy will come and bring a miracle working power into his life because a God is a God who abundantly pardons us while we repent. Repenting is basically saying, Lord, I will never ever do this again in my life. And sticking to that with so much of uh, uh, determination, saying, I will never ever will do this. As Jesus said, Go sin no more. Means uh, we'll never again visit that place anymore. That determination is called as repentance, saying that I have turned around, I have taken a U turn around to follow the Lord, follow his ways. Follow and think according to what the Lord thinks for me. That will bring. His mercy, miracle working power. Because we are greatly pardoned of all our mistakes because of our repentance. Third one, let us go obedience to the commandments of God. Mark 7, 8. Mark chapter 7, verse 8. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things you do. So laying aside the commandment of God and hold and you hold the tradition of men. Okay, leave the other thing, washing of pots and cups. And the crux of the matter is not obeying God's command but uh, following what man says. Whatever man says do this, do that, don't do this. This is what, I mean, it's own ideas. And it says, uh, this is what we are following from generation to generation. Then what does that become? It becomes a tradition. So God says, don't go according to your tradition, what uh, your uh, forefathers have told you. Walk according to the commandments, what I have spoken, my word. That is what will bring my goodness into your life. That will be evident if you read Mark 9 and 13 together. Same 7th chapter. Mark chapter 7 verses 9 to 13. No, no, 9 and 13, not 9 to 13. Just nine read only 13. 9 and just read only 13. And he said unto them, Full well you reject the commandment of God, that you may keep your own tradition, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which you have delivered, and many such like things do ye. So in the ninth verse it says, rejecting the command of God that you may keep your tradition, own tradition. So if you have to keep something, you have to reject something. Am I right? So if somebody is going to follow their forefathers and uh, their uh, grandfathers and great-grandfathers, what they have spoken to, we do it according to this from generation to generation. If they follow that, instead of following the commandments of God according to the word of God. Indirectly, they are rejecting the word of God or the commandment of God and they are holding on to their traditions. What is the effect of doing that, holding on to traditions and rejecting the commandment of God? What is the net effect? It says, uh, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition. Your tradition is making the word of God of none effect in your life. In other words, the word of God is sent. 
is been spoken, is been given, that you may have benefits from that, the goodness of God from that. But this tradition is making that word of God of none effect in your life. When does it affect your life? When does the word of God affect your life? When you believe. That's what it says. Hebrews chapter 3, you'll see, you'll see there. Because we believed. Uh, that is why it happened. So, if you believe and hold on to tradition, you're rejecting the word of God. You're not believing the word of God. Therefore, unbelief is there towards the word of God and you're believing and holding on to the tradition of men. Therefore, there is no effect of the word of God which is coming to you. You're not in a position to believe it. Because either you do this or that. You cannot do both. You cannot do a little bit of tradition and a little bit of the commandment of God. God says, either you do this or be in the place where you are. If you're holding on to the traditions, my word will be of none effect. If you come away from traditions, the word of God will be of effect. That is why Abraham was called out of tradition. He said, leave your father's house. Leave your relatives. Leave everyone and come and I will show you a land and you go and sojourn there. You go and stay there. Why did God say that? He said, leave your traditions and come. Then only my word will have effect in your life. And Abraham obeyed and left all his tradition and he came believing the word of God and the word of God took full effect of his life. That is why we call today as blessing of Abraham. Why is it called blessing of Abraham? Because he left his tradition and obeyed the commandment of God. You held on to the word of God so that the word of God had full effect of him. Full effect of God's goodness on him. The word of God had full effect of God's goodness on him. Because he turned away from tradition. So let us see <clears throat> the next uh, point, which is the last point. Fourth point. Chosen and ordained of God to follow the path of love. John chapter 15 verse 16. John chapter 15 verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and give that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Many are there in this earth, crows and crows, but very few have been chosen by God. God says, I have chosen you. You did not choose me. I have chosen you. I have ordained you. What is the meaning of choosing and ordaining? Choosing is saying that uh, I have picked you by myself into the kingdom of God. Ordained is basically I have given you a, 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 I have given you a, a work or uh, I have given, I have ordained you, it means uh, I have uh, made you to stand for something. And what has he, uh, what has he ordained us for? He's ordained us to become his witness. He had chosen us and he has ordained us. In other words, um, ordination means we're talking about uh, making a person, anointing a person and making a person to represent. The Lord has chosen us and is ordained. What is he ordained with? He's ordained us with his love that we may stand as a witness for him. Our ordination is with his love. I have chosen you and I have ordained you with my love that you may walk in the path of love, show my love to others. 
that you should go and bring forth fruit, benefits, and uh, fruit. Your fruit should remain. And whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, He may give it to you. In other words, you may have the fruit in you means you may have benefits or goodness of God in you. There will be fruit is the result of the tree's goodness. Amen. If a tree is not good enough, it doesn't bring fruit. The goodness of God starts showing up in our life. We will see the fruit, the result. Saying it should remain, that fruit should remain. It should continue, the goodness of God should continue flowing into our life. And whatsoever you ask in the name of the Lord Jesus to the Father, he says, I will give it to you. Was it the case when Jesus was walking on this earth? He just asked the Father and he got it. On this earth we run after so many things. <clears throat> when it was supposed to be uh, time to pay tax, he came and said, you and uh, Peter, you and uh, Jesus has to pay your tax. Go and pay your tax. Peter looked at Jesus and said, I don't have any money. Have you got any? <laughs> Jesus said, go to that place and uh, pick up uh, two coins for you and me, each one one, from the mouth of the fish. He went there, the fish was waiting, opened the mouth, and took the coins and came and paid the tax. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. You ask the Father in my name and he will give it to you. In other words, what was your need, it will be given to you. Hallelujah. That is a supernatural life which we are talking about in Christ Jesus. Miraculously, things will come to you. In the wilderness walk, manna came to those Israelites. Water was given to them and their cattle. Miraculously. In the middle of nowhere, in the wilderness, scorching heat, there's no water. God provided for them everything, every need of theirs. So we are not living a natural life for we are not in this natural world. We are delivered from the power of darkness unto the kingdom of the dear son where we are expected to live a supernatural life. Although we are in this world, but we are not of the world. We are citizens of heaven. We are living in the kingdom of God. And therefore, we have to live according to the principles of the word of God. As Psalmist said, I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In this land of the living, if you had to see a supernatural life, make sure your obedience is there towards the truth. Second, your ways and your thoughts should be acceptable to the Lord and you need to have obedience to the commandments of God and leave traditions aside and finally your life should be a life filled with the love you're chosen and you're ordained to walk in the path of love when you walk in the path of love anything you ask you will receive from the Lord when you ask the Father in my name, he says, I will grant it to you. I will give it to you. That he may give it to you. Hallelujah. Whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. The Father may give it to you. Why? Because you have uh, the fruit that is remaining in you. You're walking in the path of love. God says, I cannot stop it. I have to give it to you. When you ask. Because you have my likeness. God's likeness is what? He doesn't have love. He is love. Am I right? 
God doesn't have love. God is love. Hallelujah. He is love. So he wants us to have the likeness of him. We need to have his love in us. And we need to walk in the path of love to see the goodness of the Lord. This is the fourth point. Hallelujah. Go according to these four points. Meditate at home. And see how your life changes. You will not miss out on anything of the Lord. Whatever is the goodness of the Lord. You will, you will see it. It come into you in the land of the living. If I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Believe and receive. Let us stand. Thank you, Lord, <clears throat> for your grace. And